So, a couple years ago, I made a video talking about Lubuntu, which is a lightweight Linux distribution based on Ubuntu. Now, a viewer suggested that I make another video covering lightweight Linux. And this time, I'm going to be doing a Debian install, but specifically with the LXDE desktop environment, which aims to be a minimal, lightweight desktop environment. Its UI kind of looks old and janky, but it is really light on resources. So light, in fact, that if you do a vanilla Debian install with LXDE, which I'm going to be doing in this video, then it could run on almost nothing. And that includes that old computer you have laying around from 20 years ago, that could probably run on it just fine. Heck, it could probably even run on a toaster. And besides, modern UI or not, it'll still get the job done, and it will take some getting used to. And to be clear, this configuration is not meant for beginners. If you want a more beginner-friendly lightweight Linux install, then I would say go with Lubuntu. But anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so first of all, we've got to download Debian, which we can do from debian.org. And then we're going to scroll down to this download button. And then you might think the ISO you want is here. Unfortunately, that doesn't include any non-free firmware, which you'd probably need if you're running it on bare metal. So if you're installing this on bare metal, then you're gonna come down here to this non-free firmware link, and then scroll down here to firmware during the installation, and then click this link here. And by the way, once Debian 12 comes out later this year, the official installer image will include non-free firmware by default. So if Debian 12 is already out at the time you're watching this video, then you can just download it here from the main download page. But anyway, I am going to get 11.6.0 plus non-free. And for most of you, you're gonna want the AMD64 architecture. And then you're gonna click on ISO CD. And then you just get the firmware 11.6.0 AMD64 net installer ISO. Now I've already downloaded this file and got my virtual machine set up with it. So now I'm gonna go boot it up and walk you through the installer. I'm gonna do the graphical install, and then I'm gonna select English as my language, Canada as my country, American English as my key map, and then it'll attempt to auto-configure our hardware, including our network. Then we can set our host name. I would leave the domain name blank. And we don't really need a root password now that the root account is locked by default on modern Linux distributions and we have sudo. But anyway, I'm going to set up my user account and I am in Eastern time. And then for partitioning, I'm just going to use the default, which is guided, use entire disk. And I'm going to use this little bitty virtual disk that I've set up. And let's do all files in one partition, just to simplify things. And this looks good, so we can finish partitioning and write the changes to the disks. And then it'll go install the Debian base system. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. And we don't need to scan any additional media, and I'm going to choose Canada as my Debian mirror archive country. and deb.debian.org is fine for my mirror, and I'm gonna leave the HTTP proxy blank. And I'm not gonna participate in the package usage survey. So now this is where we select our desktop environment. Now this is the most important part of the process. I'm not gonna use GNOME because although it's user-friendly and it looks nice, I wanna go for something that's a lot lighter. So I'm going to go with LXDE, which is not as elegant or user-friendly, but it has the advantage of being light on resources. And LXQT is also known for being light on resources, but I'm going to go with LXDE as my desktop environment. Alright, and we can install the grub bootloader to the primary drive, 
which is our virtual drive. All right, so now the installation is complete, so we're going to click continue, which will reboot us into our new Debian install. All right, so now when we boot into our new Debian install, we'll get this login window. We've got our host name at the top here, and you've got power, accessibility options, and our desktop environment, which by default would be LXDE. So we're gonna log in by punching in our username and password, and bam, we're in. So now we've got our time here, and if we click on it, it shows us the date. Uh, our power options here, our screen lock right here, our clipboard manager, our volume control, and you get a little CPU monitor. By the looks of it, we are not using very much at all, and I'll come back to that. But we've got our menu right here, and this is where you're gonna get to everything, including your settings and all your applications. And it might take a little bit to figure out where everything is. But anyway, we've got our file manager down here, and you've got another way to access our applications. And you've got our workspaces here, our virtual desktops. We can change this number by right-clicking on this and then going to desktop pager settings and then changing the number here. And if we wanna add applications here, we just right-click on an application here and then go to application launch bar settings and then find what we wanna add like, for example, LibreOffice, which is the Office suite that ships with Debian by default. And then we can just add it. And we can move an application up or down. And now for our web browser, we've got Firefox right here. Now for a package manager, LXDE comes with Synaptic Package Manager. It's not like GNOME, which comes with a elegant, user-friendly app store of sorts where you can find and install apps. What you have to do to install updates is you click reload to check for updates, and then you'd mark all upgrades to mark the upgrades for installation, and then click apply. And if you want to install a package, you'd go here and search for packages. I'm going to search for screen fetch, and I'll show you what that is in a minute once I install it. Then it'll find screen fetch, we just mark it for installation, and then click apply, and then apply. And then after that finishes installing, now that box will be in green, and we can mark for reinstallation or removal if you want to remove a package. So this would take a little bit of getting used to in terms of figuring out where everything is and just getting used to the outdated, janky-looking UI, but... When I run screen fetch, which gives me a lot of details about our Linux installation, including our distribution, our desktop environment, which is LXDE, and most importantly, our RAM, which as you can see here, I've given it like a gig of RAM, and we've only used up about half that, which is pretty good. And in terms of our disk, of this little bitty 8 gig virtual disk, I'm only using up a little bit more than half that on a fresh install. And if I open up a task manager here, now I've only allocated one CPU core to this virtual machine. And as you can see, my CPU usage is down at 1%. Oh, and this actually shows my memory usage as 285 megabytes. So less than half. So when I say that this can run on a toaster, there are some toasters out there that this thing would run quite well on. And that concludes this video. Give it a like if you liked it, hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications. Comment, share, all that good stuff, and see you next time.